Hi everyone, Mark here again, and this time we're going to be talking about batteries, or specifically batteries for these three axis gimbals, or even more specifically, why they suck and what to do about it. So I've been buying a lot of these, and these are the batteries I'm talking about. They're the 16340 battery, and it's been really hard to get any consistency or quality with them. Like I'll buy a set of batteries from one manufacturer, they'll run great, then I'll buy the same set again, and they'll be terrible. And so it's really frustrating, and so what I've done is converted my gimbals over to use these. These are standard 3S hobby batteries, like you'd use with any RC car or whatever else. And the nice thing is, is that they're much more consistent in the quality and performance that you get out of these batteries. This is actually a pretty small one, it's 800 milliamp hours. You can get much larger ones, which give you longer run times on the gimbal. And really, most of these gimbals come from the RC space. So they're actually designed kind of to work with these batteries. This is an 11.1 volt battery. This is a 3.7 volt battery. Now remember your gimbal runs three of these, 3.7 times three. Oh, surprise, 11.1, .1. what a coincidence. So it's a really easy mod to do. The nice thing is the mod's completely reversible. So if you decide it's not for you, you can undo it and go back to the junky batteries. Um, but that choice is yours. I won't judge you for it. Um, now with that, let's do the mod. <laughs> so here's what we need to do this. I'm modding the Funny Go. But this works fine with the G3 or any other gimbal that operates at around 11.1 .1 volts. These are JST connectors typically used with RC vehicles. You could use another type of connector, but I couldn't easily source the connector on these 3S batteries, so I decided to just convert them to JST. Finally, any 3S hobby battery. I'm using Venom 800 batteries in my conversion because they've worked well for me in the past and they're relatively small. To start out, we're going to replace the connectors that are on the 3S batteries with one of our JST connectors. When you do this, make sure to do one lead at a time. This helps to make sure that you never touch the positive to the negative, which is what we technically refer to as bad. Strip a little bit off the end of the cable so we have wires on both sides to solder together, and I typically twist them so we don't end up with a frayed mess. 3S batteries normally ship with some charge on them, but you don't need to worry about getting shocked unless you're doing something foolish. Just don't touch the leads to your tongue and you should be fine. I also always put heat shrink tubing on the connections to make sure they stay isolated, but you could use electrical tape if you don't have that. If you are using heat shrink tubing, this is a quick reminder to always put it on before you solder, or you will end up doing everything again. Pay attention to which gender connector I'm using. The battery gets the male connector, and the gimbal will get the female end. Now just solder the wires together, slide the heat shrink tubing over what you just soldered, and we're ready to go on to the negative wire. Since the negative wire process is exactly the same as the positive, we'll just skip it. So with that, your battery is ready to go. I have seen some other people who have modded their gimbals to use external power as well. Most of them tended to connect into the gimbal's control area here. In one case, the person actually removed the wire from the positive that goes into the battery compartment and wired this as the negative from the external power. This allowed them to then screw the on-off switch directly to the bottom allowing for the removal of the battery compartment, but still letting the on-off switch function. Pretty clever, but I still want the battery compartment to hold on to, so we'll be doing things a little bit differently. First, we're going to drill a small hole in the battery compartment. This is where we're going to pass the JST connector out. Locate it as far down the handle as you can, but make sure not to go into the threaded part or interfere with where the on-off switch is. I picked the first smooth section above the power switch. I also like to drill a small guide hole first, then finish with the correctly sized bit. Just make sure the hole is large enough that the two wires from the JST connector can easily pass through. Next, we're going to solder the positive or red wires to the top of the battery plate by the gimbal controls. You should see a small solder blob with a wire connected to it. This is what we're going to solder onto. Make sure that you're using a female JST connector and that you've fed it through the battery holder before you solder it on. Now, we'll solder the negative or black wire onto the middle plug on the bottom switch. By wiring it this way, the switch will still work just like it did before and you'll be able to turn the gimbal on and off with it. The way we're wiring it is literally just like an external battery pack, so nothing fancy is going on here. Then just screw everything together and the mod is done. How easy is that? Do be careful when you screw it together that you don't overly twist the wires. It shouldn't really be an issue, but if you're aware of it, then it definitely won't be a problem. Now that the mod is done, let's give it a real test and see how much longer it will operate for. With 1000 milliamp rated 16340s, in the real world I would typically get about an hour of use out of them. In a similar test to this, I would typically see run times of maybe 15% more, probably due to the motors not having to do as much motion correction. 
Keep in mind that this is using an 800 milliamp hour battery, so technically it should have 20% less current than my standard batteries, but we've already passed them and then some. And there's the low battery warning, and we're just shy of three hours of runtime, so almost 3x improvement in performance over the other batteries. It's also worth pointing out that 800 milliamp hour 3S's are actually pretty small. You can easily pick up 2200s or larger. That theoretically should give you almost three times more runtime or close to nine hours on a single charge. So here's the finished product. I don't use anything fancy to hold the batteries to the gimbal, just an RC Velcro battery strap. The particular strap I'm using happens to fit perfectly in the smooth spacer portion of the battery compartment. I generally wrap the battery wires around also to help hold everything in place. Once that's done, the battery really doesn't want to go anywhere. So there you have it. Hopefully this will help put an end to any gimbal battery woes you've been experiencing. And as always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.